So why does my opinion matter? A lot of people ask me because they think they feel that I'm fairly credible um, due to I work with almost all these companies behind the scenes, give them my advice, give them help, and see what players want. I do do a lot of testing, I do have slow motion cameras, and I do do a lot of things for these companies. <clears throat> so I'm not just some player that owns a mil sig and says mil sig's the best or starts bashing everything. I own pretty much everything except the die dam. So here's some here's some of my stuff. I do have another scarab or uh, the Mark II outside. I'm actually shooting that one OD green right now um, with some black on it. It's gonna look really nice to contrast that. <clears throat> But here's some of the stuff. Um, I did that out of an airsoft kit. That's the TGR2 Mark II um, with all the new internals. That was on that one video. A lot of people think this is an airsoft gun. Um, this is an exact replica. It's an S Thunder. This is for law enforcement. This edition was. Um, this ejects metal casings. It's a .43 cal. Two CO2 cartridges come in here and they both puncture which is kind of cool. <clears throat> Let's see. I love my MK2. Uh, I modified the front, took the rail out, and made this out of three rails to give it a different kind of look. Since I like running my remote lines, I get to put whatever stocks that I want on. This is uh, another MK2, or uh, this is a Mark One TGR2, and a good old TPX. TIPX uh, 468 that I have to do some testing on yet. Let's see here. I already broke the charging handle, the knob thing off. Let me see. This is the Paradigm Pro. Um, Nelson was awesome. He gave me the second one produced. Factory laser engraved. He fucking rocked that shit. That was awesome. I mirrored the barrel on that, did the weathering. <clears throat> this is the uh, the Karmatech SAR-12 bolt action. Um, this barrel is full length. Lots of people like this barrel. Um, it's just for looks. Yeah. But <clears throat> this is some of my markers. So I do think I have a little bit of credibility when it comes to an opinion. I'm not a fanboy of any group. Take it how it is, take it or leave it. All right, I'm trying to make this as short as possible, but it never works out that way. Um, I released a video, I'm just messing around, and I shot up 140, 194 shots out of the Max Tac TGR2 Mark II, the newer one, the upgraded internals. Um, a lot of people have been asking, well, on there, uh, how come I don't get 194 shots? And how come my friend and my two friends over there, they never get that. They get 140 or whatever. What happened, people haven't been bringing up is the tank. Everything in that video was stock. The tank comes with it, the regulator comes with it, and I didn't touch the internals. Well, not yet. I did now. But um, how much PSI do you have in your tanks? How much true? PS, what's the true PSI? Because <clears throat> when you look on your gauge on the tank, that means dick. And same if you put a gauge in the marker, that doesn't mean shit either. That's just a rough idea. You can call any manufacturer that makes regulators and they'll tell you too. You can't use that for any kind of um, accurate readings. It's just there for guessing. Now, you go to your field and you fill up to 3,000 PSI. Um, when that tank cools down and you hit the field, you're probably running around 2,800, 2,900 PSI. Okay? So if you take, if you go to a scuba shop, and if they do a true fill, a real fill, they will submerge the tank in water. And they will fill it about 100 to 200 um, PSI past. When that tank cools down, it's going to drop to about 3,000. Tank, tank manufacturers, and I'm not going to debate this safety, but tank manufacturers give leeway for it. Um, it's rated for 3,000, and 
That's another thing. People talk about, well, I put 4,500 in it and it's fine. All right, I'm not really a safety Nazi, but <clears throat> let's just think about this for a second. Because I've done it, I've done it. Um, I do a lot of testing and I, I know the risks that I take and I do things in a controlled environment and field owners and things know this, but, so my waivers are for. Um, it's a stupid idea. One, it's not wrapped with anything, okay? It's not uh, fiberglass or anything. So what you have is this, yeah, your tank can hit 4,500, it's fine. You know, you have your burst disc, everybody thinks, okay, we can fill it up, if anything goes wrong, it'll just blow a burst disc. Okay, well, after time, metal stretches. Okay, so we gotta think about that. Metal does stretch after time. So that's why you will have it detonate over time. You don't want that, okay? Well, at least I don't want that shit on my back. When that goes off or next to my face, you know what I mean? You guys are putting these things next to your face. I like remote lines, but I mean, think about that. You guys don't understand with 3,000, I mean, that is 3,000 pounds. It's a weight of a car in every square inch of that body, that bottle. And you want that possibly detonate next to your face? I'll pass on that shit. But, with keeping that in mind, um, if I go to a field, I would like it if they fill me up to 3,200. And that is safe. Okay, these manufacturers do realize scuba shops and things like that, they need a true fill. Um, <clears throat> so that's really my biggest thing with that is how much air do you truly have in your tank? Because that video that I did, that was actually at 3,000 PSI. 3,000. Not 2,800, not 2,600, because even if you were at 2,900, 2,800, that gauge really isn't going to show you. Okay, it's just a guesstimate. All right, second thing that I want to touch base on is everybody's bashing spider internals. All right, fuck spider internals, blah, 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 blah. All right, I used to be on the same page. And then these, these markers started coming out a few years ago and I'm kind of starting to do my homework. And right? I'm like thinking, all right, let's, let's just, uh, let me just open my mind up and hear people out. And then I asked myself, in the well, all right, why do I not like spider internals? I started with a spider and um, <clears throat> I came to realize that I don't like them because everybody told me not to like them. All right, one mistake right there. So then I started thinking, all right, what are the pros and cons? Yeah, it's a blowback, big deal. More maintenance, sure. But a good, I mean a pro, it's, there are six million fucking parts you can find anywhere on the planet. The technology for that's been around forever because it is basically the AK of paintball markers. They just keep trucking. Now, <clears throat> everybody's like, oh, well, the spider internals, they're, they're not efficient, they're not this, they're not that. Well, okay, what, what spider internals are we talking about? Because the 468 uses spider internals. Um, the Max Tac uses them, the TGRs. Spider, well, spider uses spider internals. But the 468 is a cap at a certain around amount of mags per tank. No. Is the max tag? Absolutely not. They started with these internals and then they started modifying. They started testing different results. Well, we do this, it works better, we do that. That's just how it works. That's how every company works. Can Milsig, even though Milsig right now, I don't know how many they're putting out, 140 or something like that, 150, but it doesn't matter. Are they capped at that? No. They have been upgrading since they started, and just like every other company. Me personally, all right, here's my thoughts on this, because a lot of people ask me this. <clears throat> what do I think about how many shots? Oh, and that's another thing. Um, that video was 194 shots, but you guys didn't take into account, and I didn't mention it, that there was no shoot down on that, or I didn't, I didn't test the shoot down. The last 10 shots could have been at 200 feet per second and dropping. Okay, so now I, need, I, I have to test that next. Um, but the whole point was it got 194 shots before sputtering. Okay, so we got that. 
So that's another thing. This, so this is so this is another thing. We get a lot of people bitching about how many shots we can get out of one tank. Okay. This is how I think on this. All right. I mainly use remote lines unless I'm in a sniper set up with a different marker. Then I want to tank on the, the marker most of the time. But let's just think about this. <clears throat> Me being on the woods, big scenario. I mean, I gotta, that means I gotta fucking walk for 20 minutes before I start getting engaged. And if I get shot, that's 20 minutes back and 20 minutes back in, just for somebody to shoot me with a winger. All right, that fucking sucks. So I think of it like this. If I go out there, okay, and would I rather have, because what I do is I carry a 100 round pot on me, and I carry five magazines. So that means when I am all out in the middle of the game, I can refill or reload one time basically well four eggs but basically on the field i'm shot out way before that <clears throat> but that's besides the point what is my opinion on shots per tank what would i rather have and this is what i would rather have i don't care if my gun got six thousand shots a tank what i can't have are breaks okay when you start barrel sizing People bitch about this, all right, whatever. It's my opinion. I go bigger bores, smaller ball. The ball, people don't take into consideration when a ball is traveling, there is pressure in front of that ball as well. And I forgot the name of it, but this, an effect happens, is where the ball will float in the center of the barrel and not actually touch the walls. But you lose efficiency but you're almost guaranteed never any breaks. So, people will start, let, now let's go to the other spectrum, the side of the spectrum, people will bore size and put a, you know, a nice kind of tight in there. They will get more shots per tank, but you risk breaking paint, all right? So, what would I rather have? Would I rather have 100 shots that guarantees no breaks, or 190 shots that I'll get a break Let's say, let's just be generous. Every four mags. One every four mags. I would take the 100 with no breaks because one break, one break in my marker fucks the rest all up. And there's no point in me even playing that. I see some asshole and I start shooting and they're all over the place. I throw my goddamn gun on the ground and go back <laughs> and sit down for a while. It's frustrating when you start breaking pain. So why would I care so much about bore sizing and getting the best efficiency that I can and risk breaking paint? A lot of speedballers do this and they use really, really brittle paint. They do. So that guarantees it breaks on target. But the downside, any pictures and videos you see, they're fucking throwing up paint out of those barrels. Just, it's a fucking sloppy mess. Yeah, that's a $2,000 marker. That's full of shit. When you got a Tidman A5 that's fucking rocking 20 rounds a second with nothing in the barrel. All right, let's, all right. That's another thing. Since I got the video rolling, guys that make fun of speedballers. Um, listen, they're in the woods, they wanna play the game too. Yeah, they're wearing red and orange and blue and all that shit, that's cool. They're not making fun of you and your camo. You're adapting to your environment, and you know how I see it? They adapt to theirs. They're shooting around big blow-up balloons that are red and yellow and all this other shit. So they're blending in. That's their camo. They can have that. Um, they leave me alone. I leave them alone. But in the bigger picture, it doesn't. your marker does not make you better. Shit, I remember. I think it's 90% player, 10% marker. I remember a player, I seen this guy, I never caught his name, I just shook his hand on the way out when he was hit, because it was just, I wish I had it on video. This guy ran up with a talent, blue jeans and this piece of shit, gray talent, and he takes out two speed ballers and three woods ballers. And I say woods ballers, the difference is because they all had hoppers, two were in bright colors, the speed ball guys, and two were, or three were in camo, just shooting like A5s and stuff. So I just, I'll consider them speed, uh, woods ballers. 
The guy takes all five of them. Five of them with this piece of shit talent in blue jeans. Just runs up and starts mowing. I don't know if you guys know what a talent is, but go look it up. I won't even touch one. If it was given to me, I'd probably just... I'd probably just use it as a target. But, uh... It's a long fucking video. Covered a whole bunch of shit that's just been... People have been just asking and asking and asking me in private. So hopefully that fixes some things for you guys.